Now, quite a number of South Africans are showing signs of clinical anxiety or depression. The most definitive and alarming sign yet of the psychological toll exalted by the coronavirus pandemic. Now, as South Africa prepares to move to level three lockdown from Monday, the 1st of June, Dr. Tsiri Kule, a medical doctor and founder of Medispace Lifestyle Institute, weighs in on a few things that are sure to be on the minds of many and on how the public's behavior and discipline matters now more than ever. She joins us now via Zoom. Dr. Kule, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for having me on a very important topic. It certainly is. I mean, as we approaching winter climate uh, where viruses are so prevalent, uh, you will agree with me, Dr. Kule, and people are concerned. But you highlight on the achievements that people are overlooking, like the low fatality rate compared to other countries. Can you just uh, share a bit more on that? Yes, I think uh, Prof. Karim has been exceptional in trying to explain what the object curve um, was in terms of what the South African, especially leadership, has accomplished. And I think it's important for us to focus on the fact that we are seeing a flattening of the curve because the objective is to make sure that we reduce the infection rate to a degree where our health care system can actually cope um, with any future cases that are going to be coming up. And we all know that winter poses a seasonal risk because there's another equally famous virus known as influenza that comes to challenge most immune systems around this time of year. The most important thing to also observe is the fact that COVID-19 causes largely respiratory-related complications. So it has been important to note that lockdown was effective in not just reducing the fatality rate, but also complications from the illness itself. And South Africans have held on really well when you look at the ratio of mild and severe diseases, as much as we obviously take note and cognizant of the deaths that have occurred. And I've noticed, Dr. Kule, members of the public are now relaxing their approach to the rules. And uh, some has even mentioned that in some townships, you would swear that they are already on level one because of the relaxation of uh, some of the rules that have been imposed by themselves. So do you think that we'll actually see improved discipline by the public across the country now? I don't think I'm an optimist by saying we actually will be. And I'll tell you why. Winter is a very interesting season because it results in a rude awakening, even to those who are the most stubborn in adhering. I think two extremes are going to lead those who are a bit resistant to complying, will lead them to be more disciplined. One, the actual rate of infection increasing, and it's going to hit some of them. It, it sounds like a, quite a, a harsh statement to say, but sometimes it's when one of you is affected by the actual disease that the risk of the people around you start to realize and respect its significance and its impact. So a lot of people also tend to be a little bit more disciplined in general around winter because the temperatures aren't so forgiving. So we tend to actually start to respect that we can't be outdoors um, as much as we want. But also what I have to give commendation to is the fact that our police force security and even our retail management security has played a pivotal role in being able to turn back South Africans who are not adhering to basic things like the wearing of face masks and such in public. And we will see an increased vigilance of that in winter, which should sort out what I'm calling the rogue elements of society. And for the learner then, returning to school uh, from next week, uh, there's a general panic and concern that's going on. How do parents then keep calm during this and trust that the teachers uh, will take care of the learners? I'm a big advocate on using factual information. One, it's important for parents to familiarize themselves with the infection rates with children because that alleviates a lot of what I call the subjective anxiety. The second thing is if the parents themselves are not in a calm place about understanding what the infection is about to do and also what the real risk versus the perceived risk is of this virus, they will inevitably rub off that in. My first tip has always been calm parents equal calm kids. Sitting down your child and addressing the concerns they have because sometimes we don't actually listen to the children. And this weekend is going to be very critical for parents to address it as a general family topic. And then give them steps. Give children steps. If your symptoms are like this, this is who you report to. If you feel like this, this is who you report to. Children respond well to structure and parents need to give children a way of communicating with them 
their teachers and other stakeholders should they still have concern around the safety of their kids during this time. Dr. Sidiq Wule, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and, for, and your reflections and just, uh, just basically opening our eyes to some of these very important issues. We appreciate your time. I really do appreciate it. And South Africans, I wish you a season. Great stuff. Now, in order to decrease anxiety around the expected surge uh, in COVID-19 cases, it's important for people to take a look at the facts around what the country has already achieved. And we just spoke to Dr. Sidi Kule, a medical doctor and founder of Medispace Lifestyle Institute, on, on how to deal with anxiety under lockdown level three.